Hey everyone, welcome back to Bagel TCG. I'm super excited for this deck tech today. We're gonna to be going over our first version of Katsu with all of his new Outsiders cards. But before we get into it, I wanna give a shout out to all my patrons. By joining my Patreon, you get access to this long list of Patreon deck lists. Um, the Katsu one is the one I'm showing you today, but the Patreon one is gonna be regularly updated as I make changes, not static like this video. Um, and you also get up, up, uh, an up-to-date kind of draft tier list as I draft more in the next few weeks. I'll be updating um, this full spreadsheet with uh, how I rate all the cards, right? But let's hop right into the deck. Um, I'm really excited for this deck. Katsu was one of my first heroes, one of my first two or three heroes. I really, really like Katsu. I know a lot of people who have been playing for a long time are excited for, like, you know, Welcome to Rate their Arcane Rising heroes to get support. So this is super exciting. Um, but yeah, let's kind of just take a look at the equipment suite first. So we're on very low blocking in the equipment suite. We're definitely a full aggro deck. Um, we The only card we can really block with early is Breaking Scales for one, because it has Battle Worn. It has an amazing effect where uh, you can destroy it to give a card with combo plus one as an attack reaction. This basically means if you're ever threatening like mask momentum on a combo card or a good on hit on the combo card itself, um, your opponent has to block one extra on it or you get the free breaking scales. So really good card. Um, you'll probably want to block, block with it kind of early just to make sure you get the value out of the battle worn as well. Um, the weapons are the classic Kodashis. This give us two pretty easy to make chain links for mask and momentum, which is our main headpiece of choice. Um, if we hit three times in a row and the, the next time we hit with a, an attack action, we'll draw a card, right? So you can go Kodachi, Kodachi and attack. Um, as long as the third hit that's a, in a row is an attack, you'll draw when it hits. So really powerful effect. Um, it does break when you block with it for two. So it's going to be like a at the very end, if you're about to die, you'll block with this kind of thing. Um, and then our other two equipment don't block. We've got Heart and Cross Trap here. Uh, we're a deck based entirely around Surging Strike. Um, and this is a really expensive attack. It's two cost. Um, and if we ever don't draw a blue... Um, but we draw the rest of the combo, we still want to make sure we can do it. And so Cross Trap gives us two free resources. We can destroy it, make our next attack action cost two less. So really strong. I think this card is banned in Blitz, actually. So very good card. And then Snapdragon Scalers here. Um, this uh, basically just gives anything in our deck go again, um, except for the Surging Strikes and the Bonds of Ancestry. I think those are the only two costs. But these all get go again themselves pretty easily. So... Um, that's not that big of a deal. You could play Breeze Rider Boots here. I've been switching back and forth, and honestly, I'm, I'm not sure which one's better. Um, let's take a look at the main deck. So uh, there's a few choices in here that might be interesting. A lot of it's going to be standard. We're playing the three Ancestral Empowerment. This is card's amazing. Gives something plus one, a ninja attack plus one, and draws a card. So basically, it doesn't cost you anything. It's just a free damage, and uh, often will be... The break point to trigger Katsu or Mask Momentum. I don't think Katsu can ever not play these three. Um, Be Like Water is a great new card from Outsiders. When it hits, uh, you can pay one to change its name. Um, the only thing you'll want to change its name to in this deck, I think, is Surging Strike. Um, but if you hit and you pay for it, it's uh, basically a one-cost Surging Strike in that scenario. Um, so it's nice to get you get kind of a discount there, right? Um, but worst case scenario, it's a zero for three go again. So it's really hard for this card to be bad. Bonds of Ancestry is our new strongest card from Outsiders. Um, it's basically like a zero for eight damage a lot of the time. Um, you're gonna play it uh, for the after any kind of gust wave. It'll be a, a zero cost four go again. And then you can banish a card. You're usually, if you're not finding the Dishonor card itself, which will get the plus two, so it'll be for four, you're either going to get Fluster Fist Red for four, or you're going to get 100 wins for, for three go again. So it's a zero for seven or zero for eight. It's it's very, very strong. Um, it's so strong that often we're going to run out of them. So I do have one yellow right now. Um, I'm not 100% set on how many Bonds of Ancestry we need. When I only had the three red, I was often running out of them, and I just needed more. Um, so we might want two yellows. We might not end up needing any. Um, the number of yellows is kind of up in the air, so I, I haven't decided quite what I want there. But for now, I'm just seeing how one feels, and then you're always going to play the three reds. <clears throat> the uh, card that goes before it often is this Descendant Gust Wave card. 
Um, it can start the chain on its own because it's a one for three go again, which is just like a weaker leg tap. Um, but if you play it after a surging strike, it costs one less and gets plus two. So then it's a zero for five go again, which is very, very strong. Um, we're playing one yellow. Um, that's also for an extra copy, but the other reason is to grab it if we're doing Mask of the Pouncing Links. Um, this, when it hits, when you hit with an attack action, you can search your deck for an attack action with two or less power. So you can find, uh, you can hit with a Surging Strike and then find the Gust Wave yellow. Um, some decks we want to do that against, basically decks where they block a lot and we're never going to trigger Mask of Momentum, or, uh, or decks that we really need to get to the Sonar combo off as fast as we can. Um, this isn't something you have to do. You could possibly cut the yellow gust wave and cut the mask of the pouncing links down here. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure if we need it or not. But so far, I've really enjoyed it in the the matchups I play it in, which is like Oldham, Icelander, maybe a few others. Um, next up, we've got East Strike. This is kind of just a glue card. It does a lot of things. It's a zero cost for Katsu. It blocks for three. Uh, this card's like. It just kind of does everything. We don't need it in the deck, but it kind of fits a lot of boxes for us. Flick Flack is uh, an insane card. It is basically lets you block with two cards for nine total. Um, this blocks four, and then your next combo card, if it blocks three, will instead block five. So two card block nine is hard to pass up. Um, and if you ever don't need it for the block, if your opponent has a weaker turn, you, it's a zero cost, so you can still discard it to Katsu ability. Um, Fluster Fist is just here for Bonds of Ancestry. We play the blues because they're zero cost blues and they can block for three. And then once you get one in your graveyard, you can banish the blues or another red with Bonds to find one of these reds um, just to get that zero for four at the end, which is a ton of value. Um, 100 Wins is just another good zero cost here. Um, it's another fine card to play after Bonds. If you uh, have some extra cards in hand, you can discard a card to Katsu find like uh, either the Winds of Eternity or another Red 100 Winds, and you can do a few extra chain links if you want, so it gives you some flexibility. Um, we're playing kind of the opposite of Fluster Fist. We're playing three Reds, because the Red is more playable. It's just a zero for three go again, so uh, it's a lot better to start off with than Fluster Fist. And the Blue is a little less playable, because it only blocks two. So uh, a little less of the Blues, a little more of the Reds. We've got um, Razor Reflexes here. Uh, most everything in the deck already has go again, so the giving the go again part's not that important. Um, but our deck has a ton of on hits, a lot of on hits, and we've got Mask of Momentum here that cares about stuff hitting. So just the rate of one for plus three on basically anything in our deck except for our two cost right here um, is really good. It's just a ton of value, and, and you need to be able to get over sometimes to get that card draw off or get that Katsu ability off. Our deck just really cares about hitting. Um, and then we have the six Surging Strike. We're playing the Reds, which are a little better, and then the Yellows, which we kind of just have to play. Um, I was on just the Reds for a while, and then you would just run out of them way too early. So you need to at least play probably two Yellows. You might not need the third one, um, but you definitely need like probably at least five Surging Strikes. Otherwise, you're just going to run out, and uh, literally your whole deck is based around Surging Strike. Like This combo line cares about Surging Strike. This combo line cares about Surging Strike. It's a very Surging Strike based deck, um, so you probably need at least five of them. You could maybe trim the sixth one, but that's kind of all your options. We're playing Whelming Gust Wave. This is one of our great cards to come after Surging Strike. If you play it after Surging Strike, it's a zero for four go again that has an on hit of drawing a card. Just really good. We're playing two of the blues um, just because it's a, a fine blue. It's a zero cost um, blue that blocks three with combo. It's kind of everything we need. Um, and then, you know, sometimes we'll walk with it, sometimes we'll pitch it, sometimes we'll discard it, and if we really need to, we can play it after the Surging Strikes. I'm currently playing two Art of War. I was on three for a while, and it was a little too clunky, um, but I do like this card a lot. Uh, we're on 19 blues, which is a little high, so sometimes if you have Art of War and you draw, like, two blues, you can pitch one blue to banish the other, and then you'll get a lot better cards. Um, you can play it as kind of an attack reaction, like Ancestral Empowerment. It does replace itself, just like Ancestral, but it uh, it costs one. So I think of it kind of like an Ancestral Empowerment that costs one, but gives plus one to everything on the chain. So different there. Obviously, it's a yellow instead of a red, and it doesn't block. So it's definitely weaker. Um, the main downside being that it doesn't block. 
Um, and it requires a certain setup, right? Like you need a resource for it. You need a card you want to banish. It's a little much, but it can be very powerful when you get it going off. So uh, I think two is probably worth playing right now. Um, we're playing two Mugenshi main. We have one down here in the sideboard. This is definitely the weaker line. Um, we're looking to almost always be doing Bonds of Ancestry. Um, it doesn't Bonds works after either Gust Wave. It just says a Gust Wave card. So um, you can do it after Whelming or Descendant. You're playing all six of those reds, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but you're really looking to play Bonds most of the time. This card is good, though, against any kind of fatigue. And it's also not bad, right? It still gets you, like, in the later game, it can get you, you know, like, six or seven damage after it, it hits by finding those Lord of the Winds. So it's certainly not bad, um, but it's not nearly as strong or guaranteed as Bonds of Ancestry. So we're just playing the two right now. Um, we're playing two Concealed Blade. This is basically, for our deck, a lunging press that blocks one more. Gives an Assassin or Ninja plus one. We don't care about the on hits. We're not playing extra daggers. Um, but it's just blocks for three, zero cost blue that can give most of our attacks plus one. The new Majestic Dishonor here. Um, this card's great. It uh, it has an amazing effect where if you've played it, if you play it and it hits, and you control a Surging Strike, Descendant, Gust Wave, and Bonds of Ancestry um, on that chain, the enemy hero loses all abilities for the rest of the game. So. Turning off your opponent's hero ability permanently is pretty OP. Obviously, you need a very specific set of four cards and for the, this one to hit. But worst case scenario, it's a zero cost blue, three blocks, has combo, and it comes in for four um, after Bonds of Ancestry. So this card's never bad. It's a great second line out, and, and we do have two lines now because we're still playing the three Lord of the Wind, um, You know our specialization that comes after the Mugenshi release here. So we have two great Surging Strike lines now, which is basically why... It's our only combo line. We're not playing any head jab lines, any twin twister lines, any um, leg tap lines, just surging strike. Um, we, you can technically say we have 100 wins, but um, this isn't really because the line is good. It's not bad, but it's mostly because it works well with Bonds of Ancestry. Um, and it's probably our weakest part of the deck, really. Um, the surging strike line is just so strong. Then we're playing two stab wounds. Um, this card's pretty good. Uh, it's a zero cost blue that three blocks. And uh, if it hits in the late game, you can play this later. And if it hits, they lose um, X life, or X is the number, excuse me, then X is the number of times a dagger has hit this combat chain, right? And uh, so if you hit both times with your Kodachi and this hits, it's a zero for four, which is great for a blue. Um, I think it's worth playing. And it's nice to have some blue attacks like these that we don't care about as much for the Art of War. And then Winds of Eternity. Two of these as well. This comes after 100 wins as a 0 for 4, and it shuffles them back in, which is pretty strong getting uh, these cards back into the deck. So that's kind of the main deck here. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Still messing around with some numbers as I've talked about, mostly like these yellows. Um, you know, the number of bonds yellow, the number of descending gust waves yellow, how many yellow surging strikes we want, and then like how many Mugenshi release and Art of War we want. Um, the blues you can mess around with a little too, but overall I'm happy with like 55 of these cards for the most part. The sideboard we have our three Command and Conquer here. Um, this card's very important in, as a popper against Stromai and then into a lot of decks that care about their arsenal. Ranger's really good now, so you want that. Reinforce the line is in here over Sink Below or Fate for Scene. Um, the main reason for this is it works really well against Command and Conquer. Um, which is one of our deck's biggest weaknesses. Um, we don't have any way like Crown of Providence, so our arsenal is pretty weak, and we do want to arsenal good combo cards, like a Descending Gust Wave, Surging Strike, anything to make our lines easier to come together. So uh, this card makes it to easier to um, protect our arsenal, or it's a safer arsenal, right? Like if you arsenal it and they play CNC, you can still block and then play Reinforce the line. Um, whereas if it was a sink below or a fate for scene in your arsenal, you'd probably just have to take that damage or block six and just lose two cards. This makes it uh, a lot safer. So overall plays better into command and conquer. Most of our deck, uh, like 50 cards of our deck is attack actions at least. Um, so it's good with most of our deck anyways. It's just overall a better card for us than sink below or fate for scene. Um, we do have the one Mugenshi release here in the sideboard. Uh, the anti-fatigue plan is to give Mugenshi's go again um, and then play Lord of the Wind after. Um, in the very late game, you need to Arsenal Mugenshi release, 
And then you'll play either Ardivore to give it go again, or you'll use Snapdragon Scalers. Um, and then by using Ardivore or Snapdragon Scalers to give it go again, you guaranteed get to play the Lord of the Wind after. Um, and then you'll use all of your floating. So you have McGenchi release and Arsenal. You play Lord of the Wind from hand, and then you have three other blues in your hand because you're at the very bottom of your deck. And you can pitch all three of those blues into Lord of the Wind and get back all of your red Surging Strikes, all of your red Whelming Gust Waves, any other Mugenshi releases. You get all your red stuff back. Um, and it makes it really hard to fatigue you because you can do that three full times. You can do it for each Mugenshi release, and we have three ways to give it go again. We have two Art of War, and then we have the Snapdragon Scalers. So three ways to do it. It's basically impossible to fatigue this deck. Um, we've got two E-Pots. These are for the fatigue matchup, but also for Icelander, most importantly. Um, it's an extra blue, extra two blues, which is pretty nice. Brings us up to 21 blues. And uh, we can play it at some point to give us protection from like an Aether Ice Vein on important turns. We do have um, Arcane Barrier 3 here. Um, we don't r really need the two Kodachis into Icelander because they're usually going to tax us too much to make it so we can play them all. Um, and we play quite a lot of blues. 21 blues is a little high, and sometimes we will have like two or three blue hands. Um, and in those scenarios, we would rather have AB2 or AB3. Um, you maybe don't need this Nulrun Gloves, but I think AB3 is nice. Um, you are going to have turns where you want to pitch away to it. Tunic is for long games, and then Mask of the Pouncing Links is, uh, like I spoke to, something I'm testing to see how well it works when we really, really want to get off Dishonor, because it can find the Dishonor or the Yellow Gust Wave. And being able to find half the combo line means you only need to get the Surging Strike um, and the bonds and uh, you can even discard a card to katsu to get the bonds so makes it pretty easy to get that combo line off most of the time but that is the deck um i hope you like it i hope it plays well for you this is what i'm going to be playing the first few weeks of the new meta uh it's been doing fairly well on talishar i know talishar is not a, a great form of testing but i just use it to kind of see how the deck flows really like it so far super fun bonds of ancestry and descendant gust wave feel super strong. I love all the support Katsu got. Um, and let me know what you're going to be playing in the comments below in the first few weeks of Outsiders. I'm super excited for it. But thanks so much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment. I'll see you next time.